In this lesson, I will teach you how to draw Lewis diagrams. These are an achieved point in the exam, and you are usually asked to draw about two or three. So a Lewis diagram is used to draw or represent molecules, and they show where the valence electrons spend most of their time. A molecule is made up of two or more non-metal atoms, and they are achieving a full outer shell by sharing their electrons, and that is so they can become stable. In a Lewis diagram, we draw these valence electrons as dots, and when these valence electrons are being shared between two atoms, we draw this bond, this covalent bond, as a straight line. You can draw them as two dots if you want to, but I just think it makes more sense and is easier to work out what's going on if you use a straight line. So in this tutorial, we are going to look at how to draw the Lewis diagram for carbon dioxide. Now you will notice that a couple of steps are different to how they suggest to do it in your textbooks. And if you've been drawing Lewis diagrams how they suggest in the textbook and it's working for you, that's absolutely fine. You keep doing it that way. But if you found it a little bit complicated to work out where all those electrons go, around which atom they need to be, then I've found changing a couple of the steps make it a lot easier to work out where to place your bonds and where to place your lone pairs of electrons. So the first step is to work out which atom will become your central atom. And this is the one that needs to gain the most electrons before it has a full outer shell. So we need to use a periodic table to work this out. And if we look at carbon, it's in group 14, which means it has four electrons in its outer shell. So it needs another four to be stable. Whereas the oxygen is in group 16, so it has six electrons in its outer shell. And it only needs two more to become stable and have that full outer shell. We also need to know how many valence electrons there are in total, and that just involves counting them up. So we have one carbon and two oxygens in carbon dioxide. Each oxygen has six valence electrons and the carbon has four. So we have 16 valence electrons in total. So in the center of our Lewis diagram, we draw the atom that needs the most electrons to become stable. And that was carbon, which needed four. Before we place the valence electrons around carbon, it helps to imagine four areas around that central atom. And so I've drawn those four areas for you now. Then when we come to place our valence electrons around that central atom, we start by placing one electron in each area first and we always work clockwise around the central atom. So there we go, we have our four valence electrons. If carbon had more than four valence electrons, then we could keep going around and pairing these electrons up by adding a second valence electron to each of the four areas. But in this case, carbon just has four, so we leave it as is. The next thing we need to do is we need to spread the other atoms around our central atom. So when we place our outer atoms around the central atom, we always want to place them next to a single electron on that central atom. So in this case, all four of carbon's electrons are single. So we could have placed these oxygens anywhere but because all electrons are single in this case, we're just going to spread the atoms evenly around that central carbon atom. So now what we wanna do is we want to place the valence electrons around those outer oxygen atoms. So just like with carbon, we are going to imagine four areas around that oxygen, the outer atom, and we are going to place one electron in each area and then keep working around and double up those electrons until we've used all of oxygen's valence electrons. 
So when we add our first electron, we don't want to add it to the area that's right next to this single electron. So if we look at this area that's adjacent to the central atom single electron, and we just move one area clockwise, and that's where we add our first electron. And then we keep moving around clockwise, adding one electron at a time. And now that we've got one in each area, we keep going around clockwise, adding a second electron to each area until all six of oxygen's electrons have been added. And then we're just gonna do the exact same thing for the second oxygen. So again, we didn't start in this area that's next to the single electron. We moved clockwise one area and we put our first electron there. And then we just keep moving around clockwise. And now that there's one electron in each area, we can start to pair them up. So there are a few keywords that you'll hear quite often, especially in your textbooks. And so I thought we would just cover them here. So electrons are usually found in pairs, and that's just because it makes the atom more stable. So the electrons that are already paired up, so they already have two electrons in each area, are called your lone pairs of electrons. And those that are not yet paired up when we draw our Lewis diagrams, so our single electrons, the ones where we only have one electron in each area, are called our bonding electrons because they are going to be used in covalent bonds. So to draw in our covalent bonds, what we're doing is we're looking for any areas where there is a single electron next to both the central atom and the outer atom. So here we've got a single electron for carbon, a single electron for oxygen. Here we've got a single electron for carbon and a single electron for oxygen. Again, here, a single electron for oxygen and one for carbon. And up here, we've got a single one and a single one. So what we're going to do is we're going to join those single electrons by drawing a line between each atom. So we're going to turn these two dots into a straight line. And what that represents is that the two electrons the one that belonged to oxygen and the one that belonged to carbon are now being shared between oxygen and carbon. So they're spending some of their time around oxygen, some of their time around carbon, but the majority of their time between these two atoms. And so again, another two single electrons, and we're gonna change that into a covalent bond because the electrons want to be paired up. Again, another two up here, so we're going to replace those with a double bond, and the same for our two down the bottom. So now, all of our electrons are in pairs. If you're not quite sure what your Lewis diagram is going to look like, so you might get one in the exam you've never done before, then I suggest doing it in pencil first, because more than likely you're going to need to change where you draw your lines, or the position of your atoms or maybe just even where the valence electrons are just to tidy it up a little bit. Remember you can't leave pencil on your paper in the exam if a marker forgets to mark an entire page and you've got pencil on that page or any of the pages somewhere then you can't send it away and say hey can you please mark my answer. So it's absolutely fine to draw in pencil first but make sure you go over it in pen once you've figured out what it looks like. Alternatively, you can draw a rough copy on a spare piece of paper, just a scrap bit of paper in the exam. You can always ask your examiner for one and then draw the good copy in your exam paper. So to make sure you are right before you draw that good copy, you need to make sure that each atom has eight electrons in their valence shell. So there are a couple of exceptions to that, which we'll go over soon. But for oxygen and carbon, they both need eight. So remember that each line is two electrons. So we have one here and one here. So one of the electrons came from oxygen, the other came from carbon, and now they're being shared between both electrons. So it's just making sure you count the two electrons for each line when you count up.
your valence electrons. So if we start with oxygen, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, and it is stable. Carbon's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, so it's also stable. And finally, our oxygen also has eight electrons, so all three are stable, which is giving us a pretty good indication that our Lewis diagram is correct. The final thing you need to check is that your total number of valence electrons matches the number that you counted up at the start. So we worked out that there were 16 valence electrons in carbon dioxide, and when we count out the number of electrons in our Lewis diagram, we also have 16. So our Lewis diagram for carbon dioxide is correct. All right, so I mentioned just before that there were a couple of exceptions to what's called the octet rule. And the octet rule just means that each atom needs eight, oc means eight, electrons in its valence shell to be stable. So the first exception is hydrogen. So hydrogen and helium are in period one. So the first shell can only hold a maximum of two electrons in its valence shell. So because hydrogen only has that first shell, it is stable with two electrons. So whenever you're counting up electrons around hydrogen, you're making sure it has two. The next one is beryllium. So beryllium is in group two and it has two valence electrons. But it can be stable when it forms just two bonds. So either with two atoms, single bonds with two atoms or a double bond with one atom. So this means it is stable with four electrons. So when you're counting up Lewis diagrams with beryllium, you're counting up to four to make sure that it's stable. And finally, we've got boron. So boron's in group three, and it has three valence electrons. This means it can just form three bonds with other atoms and be stable with those six electrons. So three of its own and three shared from other atoms. So when you are counting up the valence electrons around boron, you're looking for six. So for those of you that have been paying super close attention and remember how the periodic table is arranged, you might be thinking that, hey, at the start, didn't you say that Lewis diagrams were just for molecules? In year 11, you're taught that a molecule forms when two or more non-metals share their electrons. So molecules have covalent bonds. And so if you've got access to a periodic table in front of you, you might have noticed that beryllium and boron are metals. And so at this point you're thinking, mm, but when metals and non-metals interact, they form ionic bonds where the metal gives electrons to the non-metal. We don't draw Lewis diagrams for ionic compounds. If at the moment you're like, molecules, ionic compounds, I can't remember back a year, then there is a video in the text below that recaps covalent bonds and molecules versus ionic bonds and ionic compounds. So you can have a look at that after this. There's actually a little bit more to it than we teach in year 10 and 11. It's not just covalent bonds and ionic bonds. And we will look at this in the next lesson when we look at something called electronegativity.